Good morning, everybody. This is Kevin Rice. We're going through A Course in Miracles and the Manual for Teachers, Chapter 24, Is Reincarnation True? So I'm not going to ask you whether you believe personally whether reincarnation is true for you. It doesn't matter to me, okay? Um, as I go through the paragraphs here, and if you haven't read this section first, and watching the replay. So I do recommend you go to this section and read it first before you listen to my commentary. Let's start with paragraph one. In the ultimate sense, reincarnation is impossible. There is no past nor future and the idea of birth into a body has no meaning either once or many times. Reincarnation cannot then be real in any real sense. So I'm using this book, A Course in Miracles, based on the handwritten notes of Helen Shuckman. And so in this section, Robert Perry, who is a esteemed um, colleague and a scholar of A Course in Miracles, has 11 footnotes here. I'm, only, I'm gonna only read three. And the first one is this. At, <clears throat> Reincarnation cannot then be true in any real sense. The footnote says, the reincarnation cannot be true, quote, in any real sense, end quote, means it cannot be true on the level of reality. In other words, on the level of what I refer to as level one, reality, the truth. How can we actually enter into a succession of bodies over time when bodies and time do not really exist? This does not mean that reincarnation cannot, cannot happen within the dream. It just means that if reincarnation does happen within the dream, then like the rest of the dream, it is not real. So let's step back here and let's look at this here. I have friends who believe in reincarnation sincerely, and there are friends who I have who do not believe in reincarnation. So I mentioned the first level, right, which is reality. We are unchanged and unchangeable, and, uh, and we are not a body, okay? We're not an ego, and we do not uh, attach ourselves with the notion of the separation. The separation, the ego, the voice of fear, or the body, okay? This is why A Course in Miracles repeatedly asks us, I am not a body, I am free. I am still as God created me, okay? That's level one. Level two are illusions and dream states. And yes, in this sense, through dream states, uh, I believe in dream states, what uh, Buddhism and Hinduism calls samsara, uh, the birth, death, and rebirth cycle uh, the will of karma as well. And that's mentioned in chapter five. And I might, I might put my toe in that ocean in this uh, session with you. Um, birth, death, and rebirth and dream states to me are probably um, is happening, okay? Because death does not end the dream state. Let me restate this. Death does not end the dream state, okay? I have repeatedly stated that we want to get off the karmic wheel, right? We want to get off of the samsara. Uh, we want to understand the nature of the world, maya, right? The illusion, the uh, unreal, the temporary, and so forth. And how do we do this? By recognizing the glue that keeps the karmic wheel intact. And that glue is guilt. It is the centerpiece of the egoic mind because when the ego tries to tempt you with feelings of guilt, it will also tell you consciously or unconsciously that you, your past is full of shame and sin and your future is full of fear. And because of this ideology, 
you will replicate this dream state over and over again until and unless you recognize your reality, which is full of innocence and holiness and purity. Where time and space goes by without its touch upon you, right? Because you understand that you're the dreamer of the dream that you are dreaming, okay? When you understand that you're the dreamer of the dream, it's quite easily changed when you recognize that. Your world, rather, your dream state can be changed from a dream of fear to a dream of happiness. As Reverend Chris Jackson mentioned that this morning in the service. Is the concept helpful? If it is used to strengthen the recognition of the eternal nature of life, it is helpful indeed, okay? So in other words, if I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, counselings, uh, counseling sessions with people, and um, and re reincarnation is helpful to the degree that it reminds us that we're not going to go anywhere. That at the end of the day, we are eternal. And yes, we may sleep several episodes, serial adventures in dream states over and over and again. But... In our reality, I am at home in God, dreaming of exile. That's it. Okay. It is not helpful, by the way, when we perpetuate the idea of, for instance, karma. Okay. Um, I'll go back to chapter five. I said I would put my toe, uh, dip my toe into this section. Chapter five, if you've got the purple book, you can go there as well. It's called The Question of Karma. Um, and section uh, seven. About the question of karma, and by the way, it's only in the Purple Book, The Circle of Atonement. It's not in the Foundation of Inner Peace or the Course in Miracles Society. It may be in the Course in Miracles Society. I don't know about that. About the question of karma, most theories of reincarnation are essentially magical. Okay, what is magic? Magic is the opposite of creation. Magic is miscreation because I'm using the past and the future to manipulate, manipulate and to orchestrate my journey in life and also cements uh, reincarnation and karma as well. This is why it is magic. I'm using time and space to uh, make a spell uh, to cast a spell. I, I'm using that word because Reverend Chris Jackson mentioned it this morning and he mentioned it to me yesterday on the phone. You know, um, this is the word spelling comes from, right? When you speak about reincarnation, when you, um, when you give it life, when you believe that there's karma and retribution by karma, okay, you are casting a spell. You are speaking the word. You're spelling it out, if you will. And therefore, it is true for you, okay? And it was another interesting on paragraph three, the question of karma. Don't go there. I'm just going to read it to you. Um, this course will lead you something quite different than past life readings because it points only to the future. I'm saying is this in the sense that your future in the dream state will be different when you do not fixate on your past memories or images from the past, okay? Because you haven't forgiven it yet, right? You're still um, identifying yourself with your past and therefore it will reiterate itself over and over again. Look, this is why I wrote this book. And anybody coming next Sunday to Unity on the Bay, you will be getting this book free, okay? And you're also getting bracelets too, what would love to do now. And the reason I'm mentioning my book is not to promote it, though I am, is to tell you that um, I go through uh, our interpersonal relationships, the game of love, changing the rules changes everything, because it's important for us to understand that this is why most relationships in this world fail 
because all that they are doing is they're on the karmic wheel of guilt, right? And and I'll be talking about this next Sunday on the platform at Union on the Bay in Miami because Ken Watnick calls a special relationship the home of guilt. Let me repeat this. Special relationship is nothing more than the home of guilt. The special relationship with another person is in, intact because all you're doing is you have entered into two sets of expectations coming together to live in frustration with a label of love upon it. And what is tinged into that relationship is guilt because those expectations will never be fulfilled. However, we're not asking you to let go of your special relationships, but to allow them to be transformed into a holy relationship and a holy instant without guilt, without expectations, and having a, a, an agenda-free rapport with everybody. I'm not here to get anything from you. I'm here to only give to you the light, the joy, the peace, the goodness, the kindness, the patience, and so forth to you. With respect, with grace, with graciousness, and so forth. Wow. So you want to get off the karmic wheel, right? I do. And the reason why you want to is because the karmic wheel, reincarnation, is a chain. And I will discuss that a little further here. If it were responsible for some of the difficulties the individual faces now, his task would still be only to escape from them now. In other words, they're escaping it from now. What are they escaping from? This narrative, this storyline of samsara, birth, death, and rebirth, right? If he is laying the groundwork for a future life, he can still work out his salvation only now. Here's what we do here as quote-unquote dream bodies, okay? There's somebody in the past who irks us. We don't understand their behavior. And so what we do, what, we, what do we do? We break that special relationship, special love relationship, and turn it into a special hate relationship. And so in dream states, in the reincarnation, what we do then is we replay that narrative over and over again, because it is unresolved in our minds. It's still unforgiven, right? And not only is it unforgiven, but I'm going to carry guilt in my mind warily because of the interaction I'm having with that past, um, the shadowy figure of the past, as A Course of Miracles refers to it as, okay? You can still work out your salvation now, 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 now. You see, there's a difference here, right? There's now, right? Heaven is here. There is no other place. Heaven is now. There is no other time, as we read earlier. And you're going to uh, repeat it. I'll repeat it later on as well. Heaven is here. There is no other time. Heaven is here. There is no place. And... So my salvation can be worked through in the holy instant by recognizing that salvation is nothing more than the recognition that what was never true is not true now and never will be, that the impossible has not occurred. So samsara did not occur. It only occurred in dream states, in the maya, in maya. In the illusion. That's it. Okay. So my future will be different when I understand that previously I have dropped a pebble of birth, death, and rebirth, the karmic wheel in the past, and I see the ripples of it. Oh, I was a jerk to the 
uh, clerk at 7-Eleven. And I'm sure that karma will come back to hit me back, right? I'm telling you, this is just your story. That's it. Your narrative that you keep repeating over and over again. I'll go paragraph two and then answer any questions that you have. Actually, I'll go to three because we have uh, six paragraphs here. Again, folks, we're going, is reincarnation true? Manual for Teachers, chapter 24. Paragraph two, if it were responsible for some of the difficulties, the individual, oh, I already said that. Let me go back to the end of chapter two. There is always some risk in seeing the present in terms of the past, okay? Uh, again, let's go back to chapter five in the Circle of Atonement, handwritten notes of Helen Schuckman, chapter five, section seven, right? For a discussion of the dangers of seeing the present in terms of the past. It is dangerous because what I'm doing here is I'm, look, let us recognize as the beginning lessons of A Course in Miracles that we are only seeing the past, right? Everything that we see in a dream state is already over and done with, okay? I can tell you it scientifically and through the perspective of quantum physics as well, but I don't want to waste your time here. There is always some good in any thought which strengthens, strengthens the idea that Life and the body are not the same, okay? So what we were discussing here are life, 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 right? Um, right now, you and I are in eternity. Most people think that eternity is what they experience when they quote unquote die. No. Eternity is what we are in right now. And we will always be an eternity uh, continually, okay? So there's no break. There's only a break when I go to sleep and dream a dream of separation, when I dream a dream of retribution, a, a dream of karma, um, and so forth, all right? Paragraph three, a teacher of God should be as helpful to those who believe in it as to those who do not. Okay, this is true. I'll give you an example, man. Let's. Let's remind ourselves of the law of chaos, right? The laws of chaos. Um, the first law of chaos is I have a set of perceptions and interpretations over here in my fragmented mind. And my spouse in the living room has a set of perceptions and interpretations over there. And he's so close to me but it's different. But my perceptions are right about A Course in Miracles and his is wrong. Okay, I'm immediately taking the first step into the scent toward hell, okay? So look, man, I don't do that. I don't want to engage in this as all. Well. I don't think that he wants to as well. Um, he's a scientist, he's got his own, um, view of the world and how to apply it. And so do I. It may be different. It may be the same. You know why? I don't know. It's because I don't know. I've never delved into those differences between me and my spouse. The same is true. I was in Starbucks the other day. And, uh, and this was um, an incredible uh, incident where uh, I saw a man, I saw him like three times before, and he was very kind, nice eyes, and so forth. And something in my mind said, something's going on here. And I'm in the patio at Starbucks, and I said to myself, hey, Holy Spirit, help me to see this guy through the eyes of the Christ, right? That's all he did. And as soon as I did that, he walked over to my table and sat down and began to explain his situation um, of being homeless, okay? So there was no judgment there. <clears throat> then he said, I'm a, I'm a uh, born-again Christian. Again, there was no 
uh, judgment there either. Am I a fundamentalist born again Christian? Kevin Race is not. He's a messenger of love, period. He's the light of the world. And so is he, by the way. And so did it come into the conversation about the differences between my perception of A Course of Miracles and his perspective of the Bible? No, it didn't even, I said, no, let's just set that aside. That's not what we're here for. And I'm gonna do everything to make sure you get some shelter, which I did, by the way. So you're either on a battlefield and at war right now, or you are not, right? You're either want to be right or you want to be at peace. And I'd rather choose the latter. I'd rather be at peace with the world, okay? So this is true about reincarnation. Do I lose my wits when a person tells me they feel reincarnation is real or that reincarnation is not? No, it is immaterial to my purpose and my function in this world. Okay. His ego will be enough to, for him to cope with, and it is not the part of wisdom to add sectarian co uh, controversies to his burdens. In other words, I did not want to give a, if I told him, my friend at Starbucks, that I'm teaching A Course in Miracles, which flies the, in the face of his belief system, do I do that? No, it's immaterial. I'm here to love him, to treat him as I would treat myself, the golden rule, and help him in this process, okay? So I'm gonna take a break here and I'm going to open the floor for you and I'll answer any questions that you have. Just unmute yourself, you've got the floor. So the attendee says, I'm puzzled. If I'm on the karmic wheel, how do I get off of it? Yes, I think so. And so I'm going to answer your question. If it wasn't the right question, then restate it. But I think that what you're asking is you're a little puzzled about the being trapped in the karmic wheel yeah. and, uh, and how to uh, get off of it. So let me restate here. The reason why we are on the karmic wheel, okay, or believe in reincarnation um, or retribution because of uh, the belief in karma. We are identifying ourselves as, solely as a self image that's playing out in a dream state over and over again. So when you understand, as I did, as I said last week, all that we are doing is watching a play. All that we are watching is an inner movie. That's it. And therefore, the reason why we keep watching this inner movie, the play in the dream state is because what hooks us is the guilt from our fixation of the past and our inability to truly forgive the past for what it is. The past is over, it cannot touch me. The past is over, it cannot touch you either. But only touches you in dream states if we believe that the past is going to be your present. So in your individual state with you, when I will see you next Sunday, perhaps in Miami, um, when I see you, I do not use your past as a reference point to uh, against the present moment. I'm only seeing you now, 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 beyond any appearances of time and space. The reason why we are stuck in the karmic wheel is because we are fixated on this underlying guilt that we keep fostering in our mind and then repressing it and projected to other people unconsciously. They're the problem, not me. And therefore, the karmic wheel keeps spinning over and over again. The way we get off of the karmic wheel is to recognize that we are on it by our own choosing. I have done this thing. 
and it is this that I will undo and to forgive the whole freaking thing. Yes, generally, extremely, yes. And from time to time, you forgive an individual. But as I said last week, the court says, do not ask, do not forgive your brother for what he did. Forgive your brother for what he did not do. Because everything that your brother did, did it in a dream state. And therefore is illusory. Is illusory. Um, does that answer your question? The attendee says, yes. It reminds me of lesson 41. God goes with me wherever I go. Well, the, and the same is true in the belief in reincarnation as well. If I'm fixated on a belief in reincarnation and I'm at peace with it, that's okay. Um, if another individual is fixated on their um, sectarian uh, perspectives and so forth, I'm okay with that. So my question for you is, when you went through lesson 41, God goes with me wherever I go, it brought you to a place of peace because you recognize the belief system that you were carrying at the same time and that you let it go of? The attendee says, yes, it brought me peace. Another attendee said, you said we are in eternity. What does that look like? So <laughs> let me... Um, You know, one of the glossary uh, uh, of course terms is eternity. And it says a state is completely outside of time rather than an infinite stretch of time. Instead of being a linear pro pro progression from past to endless future, eternity contains only, quote, the endless present where the past and future cannot be conceived end quote. That's a workbook lesson 169. Instead of containing the three dimensions of past, present, and future, quote, eternity is one time, its only dimension being always. Now, there are two different schools of thought here, okay? Okay. Um, Keep in mind that we are in a process here. When you say, Kevin, you said, Rev Kev, what do you mean that you're in the present moment? Does this mean that that the appearances is, is the dream state is continually going to be there? The answer is no, no. <clears throat> because all we are looking at is merely a projection. That's it. And the purpose of A Course of Miracles is to release our projections and replace it with extension. Okay, uh, number one. Number two, as I almost say every week, a false, self, a false self image has come to take the place of what I am, all right? So this means the self image called Kevin Rice, the self image is here, right? And, um, and, and so therefore, it is important to understand that what we are experiencing in eternity is the opposite of what we are experiencing here. We are experiencing light in eternity instead of viewing the darkened glass of the ego, which we are seeing now, okay? So you say, what does this look like, okay? Well, I'm still going through level two just like many of you are as well, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so therefore, right? Obviously, Kevin Rice is still experiencing himself as a lucid dreamer, right? Okay. He's aware that he is a dreamer, right? He's aware that the dream is coming from him, his mind, not the self-image. He's still still sleeping and dreaming. He still has a dream body. He recognizes the dream body is not his self, right? Okay. And the dream body is coming from his mind. Okay. So you are awake in the dream state at that time. Mm -hmm. But you said, 
what is reality going to uh, look like? Okay. Well, being in reality means that you are not asleep anymore. It means that you're not dreaming anymore. That the dream that you dreamt does not exist. And anything made of the dream stuff doesn't exist. And dream bodies do not exist. And you do not have a dream body when you are awake. Okay? Because you're not, you're not uh, dreaming anymore. Somebody asked yesterday in one group uh, platform, I don't remember it. Um, and somebody said, okay, I don't get this. If there, if we are reality and so forth, and there's seven and a half billion people in this uh, dimension, in this world, does that mean that there are seven and a half billion souls, right? And the question was even furthered by saying, well, you know, uh, a century, we didn't have seven and a half billion people. We had three and a half billion people. Does that, what happened to the other souls and so forth? And the answer was, well, I had a dream last night where there were 20,000 people in a stadium. How many souls were there? right? There was one, 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 one. So I can't tell you because there's no frame of reference from this dimension in the third dimension to explain, to um, picture how reality looks like. I can tell you I have glimpses of it, which were beautiful, which were full of light. As lesson 15 says, from time to time, you're going to experience light episodes, uh, which is not true vision, but it is a pointer to true vision. So I can't really give you a full explanation of what your reality will look like once we have ascended and dropped this self-image called whatever name it is. Does that help? The attendee says, yes, that helps a lot. Anybody else? <laughs> the attendee says, what's the most effective way to deal with random thoughts of the past? So, so I can give you an example here uh, from, I'll use the third person, Kevin Rice, okay? So Kevin Rice had a memory from the past about a brother who he was close with for... I don't know, many years. And then all of a sudden, after Kevin Rice's mom died, he kind of disappeared completely. And Kevin Rice doesn't understand what just happened there. And so Kevin Rice stood, stood back, right? And he allowed the light within him to step forward, to look at this situation through the eyes of the Christ, through the eyes of compassion, through the eyes of forgiveness, and also through awareness, becoming aware, Kevin, did you have any emotional charge when you remember about your brother? And his answer was, no, you don't. You have no emotional charge whatsoever. Okay, Kevin, are you at one with him? Yes, you are, Kevin. So this is my processes in my mind when a person pops up who brings a sense of angst to me. So that could have brought me angst because curiosity, as the Course says, is an egoic mind. I'm curious what the hell happened there. I still don't know. I still don't know, but I don't care, okay? I can say he is my brother, okay? So let me further say that when an individual who pushes my button, right, during the day, I my default is because I will to know myself, I see my brother as God's son, 
I see John Doe as God's son and my brother, right? Uh, because I will to know myself, I see my... Because I will to know myself, I see Jane Doe as God's daughter and my sister. To me, this neutralizes this whole thing. Um, and, to, and, and the other way to answer your question too is I could have projected to my friend years ago who just disappeared, right? Uh, out of the blue with no explanation. I could have been projecting my own unconscious guilt to him saying, what, what, what just happened? What just the heck, heck just happened there? But I can squelch this immediately when I replace that unconscious guilt with extension. To John Doe, I offer you beauty. To John Doe, I offer you understanding. To John Doe, I offer you wisdom. To John Doe, I offer you awareness. To John Doe, I offer you forgiveness. That is my default through the day if I, if, if somebody who I am bumped up against in the dream state ticks me off. That is what I do. Does that help? The attendee says yes. Thank you. Let's go back to this lesson here. And we're almost done here. We got about six minutes left. So paragraph four, five, and six. It cannot be too strongly emphasized that this course aims at a complete reversal of thought. Oh my God, it is a, a course in um, a complete reversal of thought. What was my thoughts before I entered to, um, where, before I embarked upon the course? I was a gloomy Gus, a negative Nancy, right? I tethered myself with guilt that I felt my Christian belief system was founded in suffering, right? And I felt my future was full of fear and my past full of sin and shame. I changed my thought system. I reversed that thought system to the one that I am presenting today. When this is finally accomplished, issues such as the validity of reincarnation become meaningless. Who cares? Okay, I want to mention this as well. Um, in paragraph four, the teacher of God is therefore wise to step away from all such questions, okay? Uh, for he has much to teach and learn apart from them. He should both learn and teach the theoretical issues, but waste time draining it away from its appointment, uh, appointed purpose, okay? And properly interpreted here properly refers to Jesus' penchant for reinterpreting ideas. For instance, he re reinterprets Freud's idea that we can become fixated at certain stages in our infancy so that it can become the idea that, quote, you were eternally fixated on God in your creation. That's a text in chapter five, where he talked about Freud there. It is quite egotistical, very prideful, self-absorbed. If I am fixated in reincarnation about my past lives, okay? So, for instance, if I have a notion of, oh, I think I'm the reincarnation of Charles Fillmore, okay, the co-founder of Unity, okay, and I used to live at his home in, in, at Unity Village in Kansas City, uh, or if I have a thought, oh, uh, I think that I'm Edgar Casey reincarnated, or I think I'm Peter reincarnated, that is prideful and egotistical and not useful at all. All I'm doing is drud drudging over a past image and replacing it over this self-image. And so it is not useful at all, OK? 
Okay. Um, okay. Now, paragraph five says, does this mean that the teacher of God should not believe in reincarnation himself or discuss it with others who do? Certainly not. Okay. In other words, it doesn't matter. I can, I'm discussing reincarnation with you right now. If somebody in the counseling session wants to um, discuss reincarnation, I'm not going to step in and say, oh, no, we don't talk about reincarnation. Okay? It doesn't matter. It's meaningless. If it is meaningful to those people, then I will respect that with sincerity. Okay? He might be advised that he is misusing the belief in some way that is detrimental to his pupil's advance or his own. Reinterpretation would then be recommended because it would be necessary. All that must be recognized, however, is that the birth was not the beginning, that the birth was not the beginning, and death is not the end. So let me give an example. So if a friend says, look, um, is perpetuating karma and saying to me, oh, I can't let go of the past and it keeps popping up in my experiences over and over and over again. And this is just karma. This is uh, reincarnation. I don't know what I did in the past life. I would reinterpret his interpret. I would reinterpret his belief system by saying, hey, let's set that aside here and recognize that the nature of what you're referring to in terms of reincarnation tells you one thing and one thing alone. And that is you are eternal. You're not going to go anywhere. And the essence and the substance of who you are is not tied to that narrative of birth, death, and rebirth, but you are instead can fixate on the unchanging, unchangeable, an unchanging nature of the eternal nature of the Christ within you now. I'm reinterpreting his belief system because it's helpful. It's helpful to change the dynamic from time to time, okay? And then finally, the emphasis of this course always remains the same. It is at this moment that complete salvation is offered you, and it is at this moment that you can accept it this is still your one responsibility, okay? And again, the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. You say, Kevin, <clears throat> what's going to happen? What's going to happen when I let go of the story of samsara, the birth, death, and rebirth? Hmm? Like Byron Katie says, what would you be without that story? The question for you and me on the table today is, what would you be without that story of reincarnation? What would you be without that storyline called karma? Okay. What you would experience is the present moment. The holy instant. You'd understand the spaciousness dimension instead of object dimension. You would understand the totality of your oneself as you let go of the dream bodies who's dying and rebirth and over and over and over again, because that narrative is set aside. It's set aside. Why? Because it's never true. It's not true now and never will be. That is salvation. As I said earlier today, salvation is nothing more than the recognition that, will, that was never true, is not true now, and never will be, that the impossible has not occurred. The opposite of God does not exist. Your reality, your identification is true and is real, as we set aside all of those narratives and storylines and so forth and connect ourselves with our source, God, our creator, and connect with our brothers and sisters and treat them as we would be treated with love, compassion, and so forth. 
A Course in Miracles says, To give and to receive are one in truth. I will receive what I am giving now. If you are inspired to support Unity on the Bay and myself, you can text UOTB to the phone number 73256 and you'll receive a link to enter your donation and then drop down to ACIM Kevin Rice to indicate that your offering is directed to this class. Or you can give through the website unityonthebay.org slash give and drop down to ACIM Kevin Rice under select fund. Your donation goes to support Unity on the Bay and the time and value we put into providing these teachings. I invite you to also visit OnlyLovingThoughts.com for all our A Course in Miracles videos and much, much more. Thank you, and thanks for sharing this A Course in Miracles Zoom class with other people.